The upper airways have been shown to be reservoirs for high concentrations of SARS-CoV-2. For ophthalmic surgical procedures, the role of routine preoperative COVID-19 screening remains controversial in light of testing accuracy and availability. In a series of simulations involving a patient undergoing ophthalmic surgery, our team aimed to illustrate the potential spread of respiratory droplets and the precautions required to minimize the droplet spread. A mannequin was set up on a stretcher in an operating room setting with a nasal cannula delivering oxygen flow at 5 liters per minute. Fluorescent 40 micron dry particles were placed over an air pump inside the oral cavity of the mannequin. These methods have been adapted from previous studies on visualization of cough droplets. In the first simulation, the mannequin was not wearing a surgical mask, but a complete seal of the drape around the surgical field was ensured. Under ultraviolet light conditions, a scenario of a coughing patient under the drape was performed. This was accomplished by repeatedly pumping compressed air towards the oral cavity through tubing that was run inside the mannequin. The surgeon's hands were placed on the forehead of the mannequin. Despite visualization of large amounts of fluorescent dye around the mannequin's cheeks, a clear demarcation line representing the extent of droplet spread under the draping with a complete seal was identified. No visible droplet contamination of the surgical field was identified beyond the surgical seal. There was also significant droplet contamination of the underside of the drape and the mannequin's body covering. With the removal of the adhesive draping, further spread of droplets were produced onto the lower eyelid of the mannequin. In the second simulation, the use of a taped surgical mask for the patient was implemented. However, an incomplete seal of the surgical drape was intentionally applied by leaving a gap near the medial campus as it is not uncommon for an imperfect seal to be applied or to develop during ophthalmic surgery due to various reasons. In this repeat simulation with multiple coughs produced by the mannequin, spread of droplets onto the surgical field and the gloves of the surgeon were noted. Minimal droplet contamination of the underside of the drape was noted, indicating the utility of a surgical mask to mitigate droplet spread. After removing the drape, the spread of droplets from beneath the mask were noted on the lower and the upper eyelids, as well as the medial campus of the mannequin. In the third simulation, in addition to the use of a taped surgical mask for the patient, care was taken to apply a complete surgical seal with adhesive of the draping. After multiple simulated coughs, no droplets were identified on the surgical field. Furthermore, there were no droplets identified on the surgeon. Minimal droplets were noted on the underside of the drape. With the removal of the drape, the spread of droplets from beneath the mask were noted on the lower eyelid of the mannequin. Findings from these simulations of ophthalmic surgery suggest the following regarding the surgical draping and use of masks for patients. Despite a complete surgical seal of the drape, the lack of a mask on the patient resulted in droplet contamination of the underside of the drape, but no other visible droplet spread. An incomplete surgical seal of the drape with the use of a taped surgical mask for the patient resulted in droplet contamination of the surgical field with minimal droplet contamination of the underside of the drape. A complete surgical seal of the drape and a taped surgical mask for the patient decreased the droplet spread onto both the surgical field and the underside of the drape. However, care should be taken when removing the drape to minimize further spread of any particles. It is important to note that this simulation does not identify the spread of very small particles and droplets. The volume of the cough was intentionally overproduced beyond what would be expected in a natural cough in order to account for the potential extent and multidirectional spread of a true cough in various scenarios under one simulated setting. Furthermore, Repeat simulations may demonstrate variable results. The use of a nasal cannula with oxygen flow at 5 liters per minute is in the upper limit of what would be used in most ophthalmic surgeries. The effect of lower oxygen flow may be different and vary when applied to a real patient. The differences in style and technique of applying the surgical drape may also affect the generalizability of these findings. Lastly, appropriate masks for the patient and PPE for the surgeon should be selected on a case-by-case -case basis for patients who are low risk, 
suspect, or confirmed positive for COVID-19. In summary, a complete seal of the draping adhesive around the surgical field is critical for preventing the spread of respiratory droplets from the patient during ophthalmic surgery. A gap in the seal may serve as a conduit for respiratory droplets to travel onto the surgical field and increase the risk of exposure for the surgeon. Application of a transparent adhesive film dressing may further reinforce the draping. Patients should wear a taped mask during ophthalmic surgical procedures in order to minimize the spread of respiratory droplets onto the surgical field and under the draping. This will in turn decrease the risk of cross-contamination for anesthesiologists and operating room personnel. Surgeons should be mindful when removing the surgical drape due to the potential spread of droplets underneath the draping. If possible, turning off or reducing the oxygen flow before removing the draping is recommended. Furthermore, administration of postoperative drops and application of an eye patch for the patient should be done prior to complete removal of the drape or with clean gloves and avoiding direct contact with the patient's face. Thank you and stay safe.